both the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are really beat up heading into this revenge game on Sunday in Tampa. But could A.J. Brown play in this matchup? We'll get into it coming up next right here on Locked on Eagles. You are Locked on Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. It's a Friday edition of the show. I'm Louis DiBiase, joined as always by Gino Camilleri, and we're brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Even if you don't win the bet, just visit FanDuel.com to get started started we'll try to win you some bets on FanDuel this week for Eagles Buccaneers LOE 3 we do have to postpone it everybody just to let you know until we'll do a bonus Saturday or Sunday show because the FanDuel lines have not come out yet for player props as the injury report you know on both sides is just it's as stormy and rainy as the conditions are going to be in Tampa Bay with this hurricane but the good news is for the Eagles on the injury front while Devontae Smith is out with that concussion questionable A.J. Brown and Lane Johnson have a chance to play in this football game, and that's massive, especially when you look at Tampa Bay. Their injury report is as cluttered as Phillies, and we know a couple key players for them are not going to gear up, including Antoine Winfield and Kalijah Kansi. And it also looks like their young wide receiver in Jalen McMillan is doubtful to play. You got guys like Vita Vea, who is still questionable. Luke Gedeke, their starting right tackle, who James Yarko mentioned on yesterday's show, is probably the most pivotal piece for them in the game that he did play, as opposed to the two that he didn't play. They didn't allow a sack. I think they allowed one sack maybe, and in the last two weeks, they've allowed double-digit sacks. So if Gedeke isn't ready to roll, that Eagles defense, they got guys that are ready to roll. But on the offensive side of the ball, Lou, we always knew that was going to be the question coming into this week. Lane Johnson, it looks like he's ahead of Devontae Smith, clearly in the concussion protocol. Devontae Smith has yet to come back to practice, still hoping he heals up. He'll be ready to go by the the time the bye is over, I would assume. That would be no question. But A.J. Brown, Lou, I am wondering why would he be on the practice field with this being the last game before the bye if he wasn't going to play? Like, why even risk it if he was going to have any question about injuring this thing again, because if it was a game time decision, we'll still see. We don't know if it's 100% that he's going to play. I believe that you just say, Hey, take the additional two weeks, get healthy. This early buy is almost a blessing in disguise, but if he's out there practicing Lane Johnson is practicing. Those are two guys that love to compete. I can't see them if they have the opportunity to be down on that football field that they don't suit up on Sunday. And if so, that's a huge bump for this Eagles defense, man. You talk about Antoine Winfield being out of this game. Talk about the deep shots that would open up downfield if yeah. you had AJ. I know. I, I totally agree. I think it's a good sign that he's practicing, that he has a shot. Cause like you said, they do have that bye week coming up after this matchup. I also think though, it has to do with the specific injury. He has a hamstring is, you know, it's so hit or miss every single week. Like it's mm-hmm. not an obvious, it takes this amount of time to heal this injury, right? It, it can be ticky tack and nitpicky. So I think they probably want to rev him up, see how he's doing on the practice field. Maybe this is a game time decision type of move, but you know, if they could get AJ Brown, that'd be a massive help because the weather is not going to be great. You're not going to have Devonte Smith and this is a really important game to get to 3-1. and one. And I said on the show on Wednesday for the psyche of this football team to go into Tampa Bay and get a win. Well, they've suffered some brutal playoff losses over the last few years. Like, it's important. So last year they had Devontae Smith without A.J. Brown in Tampa. Hopefully this time they'll at least have Brown without Devontae. And if they don't, Lou, I think the game plan is simple. Do exactly what you did in the fourth quarter of that game last week. I Rely totally on agree. the two guys that you know can get the job done for you. Rely on your trenches, man. I think this mm-hmm. game the Eagles are going to win even without A.J. Brown if he doesn't play because they have a massive advantage on both sides when it comes to their lines. So they're going to dictate the yes. ball, I think, on both sides. Especially if Vita Vea doesn't play, Lou. They're That's really huge. going to be able to do what they want to do in the middle of that offense. And it looks like Makai Becton is going to step right back in and even if so Tyler Steen looked wonderful last weekend Fred Johnson if he has to step up I'm sure he'll be ready to go 
But if you get Lane Johnson and Makai Becton back and you have all five on the offensive line, Lou, it's a simple recipe. You go down to Tampa in an environment where they're saying it's going to be over 100 degrees real feel with that humidity after the hurricane. And it's going to be moist, gross. The rain, that's just disgusting. Weather. It's gross. Oh. And yeah. that's an environment. Play in this game. You don't want to get into a track meet, right? Like you don't want it to no. say we got to we got to chuck the ball downfield six to seven explosive times this game. No, let's let's have these longer drives we can work the play clock a little bit and honestly Lou in the moments that they've really looked good this year that has been the recipe for them have these long drives where you get the defense on your toes and you're able to work down the clock and you're effective in your moments and Jalen Hurts is able to hit these guys in spots because if you don't have the top two that's what it's going to be it's going to be death by a thousand cuts to a degree you're going to have to hope that Jahan Dotson could get open at times and I mean, you only have two healthy guys on the roster. Johnny Wilson is going to be in this game and probably your number one X receiver. Do they elevate Anaya Smith for this game? Do they bring in? No, If they line up John Ross while he's wearing number 38 at wide receiver, Lou, I am going to be physically sick come Sunday because that would be criminal. When I it- can't imagine he plays much. They're going to go 12 personnel a lot with Grant Calcaterra, yeah. and their top three receivers will be Dotson, Campbell, and Wilson. Um, for the other side of the ball, though, Tampa Bay's offense also, Gino, they're not at full strength. You already mm-hmm. mentioned Luke Hideki was a limited participant today in practice after being a full participant on Thursday. So he was um, limited, or he was, yeah, limited Wednesday, full Thursday, but then back to limited Friday. Mm-hmm. So that's not a good sign, I think, for him. He's questionable. And Bucky Irving, your guy from Oregon, who's been the better running back in Tampa over Rashad White, he's also questionable. So I think the Eagles, when it comes to their defensive line, and they're coming off a massive performance against Tampa Bay, you look at Baker Mayfield, he's a quarterback that likes to hold on to the football a little bit longer. If they don't have an established run game, which already was 27th in total Mm -hmm. yardage and yards per game with Bucky, if he's out, if they don't have their top offensive lineman potentially in this game, Cody Mock from North Dakota State, a second-year player, has been really struggling this year. Again, I, I think they're going to dictate this game on both sides in the trenches. I think this is another Jalen Carter game. And the good thing about Tampa Bay, unlike the first three, two teams that you play, no, three teams. Oh, my three. God, I'm getting these weeks all mixed, mixed up here. But they don't run a ton of play action. Like Baker Mayfield does not have his back to the line of scrimmage a ton. Like you're going to be able to get through your gap and just go. And like you said, Baker Mayfield, even Jalen Carter pointed this out. And I I don't think it's a fault to Baker Mayfield. That's just kind of who he's always been, like wants to hold on and be that playmaker. But in this game, if they can't set up the line of scrimmage, dictate those rundowns like they want to with Bucky Irving. If you go from a guy averaging four yards to a guy averaging 2.4 yards, that's massive, especially against an Eagles defensive line, which dictated all game what Alvin Kamara was and was not going to do. Then you know all we have to do, it's a tough test. Of course it's a tough test, but we have the two guys on the outside and that's our job. two big guys, right? And I think Tampa Bay does have the two right receivers for these kind of conditions, right? big-bodied possession players. Mike Evans can high-point the football better than anybody in football. Chris Godwin in the slot can get those physical yards over the middle. If they can just stop those two. And, Gino, I'm curious what their strategy is going to be with Godwin, especially if he's playing a lot in the slot. Are they going to keep Avante in there? Mm -hmm. Do they want Quinion or Slay shadowing him or Mike Evans? It'll be interesting. But, yeah, I agree. If you could just stop or limit those two, I think you're winning this football game even without your receivers. The worst case scenario would be that all of the sudden, even if Bucky Irving isn't in this game, that you really can't hit home on Baker Mayfield and they can kind of do what they want to in the run game. And then all of the sudden you put them in these situations where Chris Godwin, whoever is defending him, he could set you up for a little short route at the sticks and then boom, all of a sudden he's passed you on a a nice little double move and Mike Evans, like you said, a jump ball receiver. There's nobody on this defense that physically can match up with him if you're going to throw it up to him five to six times a game. Like Slay and Quinion will get there at some point, but you know that three touchdowns from these guys is probably the recipe that would make you lose this game. If you're able to limit them to one to Godwin, maybe one to Evans or one to another and zero to another. Like that's how you're going to win the football game. Make the run game beat you. Make those other playmakers beat you. And Vic Fangio, last week it was a masterpiece that he drew up. 
you got better playmakers on the outside to worry about. I mean, Chris Olave is good. Don't get me wrong. Rashid Shahid down the field is good. Mike Evans has been doing this at a Hall of Fame oh, pace. Step up. Chris Godwin is a legitimate ball player. Everybody in Pennsylvania knows that from his Penn State days, and he has lost no step at all. All it really takes is one or two explosive plays from these guys, and then you're saying, okay, we might have to play from behind a little bit here. But that can't be your mindset. I think what you said is best. Dictate the line of scrimmage. Make we it know a dog Jay- fight and you win this game. Yes, exactly. Like sh- scrap it up in the mud down there. You know it's going to be hot. Finish you know guys tackles. are going to be. Yeah, just you don't have get explosive to. plays on Tampa side, and I think you're winning. You know, and, and again, mm-hmm. it would be huge to have AJ Brown back, but I still like the matchup. I, I think the Eagles get revenge in Tampa. I'm feeling pretty good about this matchup. Jalen Hurts still the quarterback. That's a huge part of this. You know, he does have kind of a new challenge or something he doesn't face much in his career. We'll get into that coming up next right here on Locked On Eagles. This episode of Locked On Eagles is brought to you by Robin Hood. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually re- uh, reserved for the high society. Now the resourceful individuals with Robin Hood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at RobinhoodGold.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit RobinhoodGold.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. As well as Robin Hood, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks, which of course is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike the other apps where it could be you against a thousand computer entries, no, it's just you against the Prize Picks numbers. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll. And you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct selections. You want to play prize picks alongside Drewski, Joe Budden, and MMA former champ Sugar Sean O'Malley. Now you can over at the community plays tab and the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community. Each week, Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. And when my pick hits, I can get my money in as quickly as 15 minutes. So to get in on the action, download the Prize Picks app today and use the code Locked On NFL and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On NFL on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. And you don't even need to win to get that fifty dollar bonus; it's guaranteed. Prize picks run your game. Eagles Buccaneers, a one o'clock kickoff on Sunday. It's going to be, I think, a monsoon from what it sounds like, Gino. The conditions not ideal for a football game. Muggy and wet. I think that's just the absolute worst conditions mm-hmm. to play such a physical sport. Uh, but at the same time, it's a, it's a big game for the Eagles, and they're banged up right now. On offense, A.J. Brown was a limited participant with that hamstring injury. Devontae Smith was ruled out with the concussion. So, Gino, Brown has a chance of playing, but let's say he doesn't. This is a rare opportunity, or I should say a rare challenge for Jalen Hurts, where when you look at his career, because Howie Roseman has done such a better job of surrounding him with talent as opposed to you know Carson Wentz, so you look back in the day with – how they surrounded Donovan McNabb with talent. He really hasn't had, hasn't had many games like this where he has like Jahan Dotson caliber player as his wide receiver one and a Paris Campbell practice squad like player on the field. And even a Johnny Wilson. That's a so basically as a day three rookie, a um a practice squad player and a, a guy you just trade a third round pick for mm-hmm. as your top three. Like that's a challenge that he hasn't really had to overcome. He's had it a few times, like 2020 when he's a rookie, but it, like last week in the fourth quarter. But this is a rare challenge where Hertz has to elevate a team that it's not going to be as loaded as he's used to. And luckily he passed the first test last week, but this is a big challenge for sure. 
Well, I don't think you would have paid him the contract that you did if you didn't believe he can win these type of football no, games. Of course. But and, he really hasn't had to do it. And luckily, he again, he's done it when he's needed to, 2020 mm-hmm. against the Saints last week. Really, it was both times against the Saints. But yeah, like you just haven't seen this much, which is a good thing. I think this game will be really important to see the maturity level of Jalen Hurts as a mm. game manager. And people put a negative connotation to that game manager. It's like you're a check down king. No, no, no. What I mean here is understand what the context of your passing game is going to be. Like those balls that you try to force to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, know that they're not going to be there. Know what these guys do well. Be a game yeah. manager within the context of what you have. And contextually, you still have Saquon and Dallas Goddard. So don't forget about those two guys. I think it's a heavy dose of them. And Jalen Hurts has to realize, I just have to play point guard. That's what he says in a lot of his discussions. I just have to be the guy to distribute the ball. We well, don't got LeBron out there. You don't got the big three. They're not there, frankly. But you got role players. And if you take care of the ball, don't turn it over. Situationally possess the clock play much safer than you have in the past couple weeks, I think that will probably be a bigger test, even if they, a bigger check in it off of a box, let's say, than even winning this football game. Because if you're able to keep it close and you take care of the ball and the game plan was right, but it came down to like a one score game, Tampa wins kicking a field goal or something. Well, at least you did what Nick Sirianni and the the offense wanted to do. But if you go out there and you're turning the ball over multiple times and you're taking deep shots to Jahan Dotson, who's clearly not open, like Daniel Jones was doing the other night to guys not named Malik Neighbors, like you just can't do that. Contextually play within the game and manage this game. This is going to be one where it's a money ball approach. Like you got to play smart and understand you're going to win in the margins. You might not hit those big explosive plays, but you still have enough players yeah. Because Howie Roseman and company did a good enough job of surrounding you. You still have a great offensive line, Saquon Barkley and Dallas Goddard. If those role players don't get it done, well, that's maybe a question of trying to replace them in the offseason, but they have to do it now. They have to step up. Yeah, he can't make mistakes either. He can't be forcing the football in the red zone and throwing bad picks. He can't be fumbling and not playing well against the Blitz, Gino. It's going to be harder without Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown mm-hmm. against the Blitz. Those are kind of his go-to players when guys, when defenses send five plus. And I I don't think it's just going to be five guys at times in passing situations that Todd Bowles sends at Jalen. You know, it's going to be at times six, maybe seven players. And that's something Hurts has struggled with in the past. So he's going to have to throw guys open at times and then pick and choose your spots when to create. Because I don't think, I like Dotson, but I don't think Dotson, Johnny Wilson, and Paris Campbell are going to make it easy for Jalen where there's a ton of separation. He's going to have to be accurate. He's going to have to be able to throw well on the run like he did last week. He's going to have to be a pretty special player. But I agree mm-hmm. with you, though. Be special when you need it, but don't play hero ball the entire no. game. Because considering the weather and considering the personnel, even with Tampa Bay's banged-up defense, you don't want to make mistakes. Just stay ahead of the chains. And mm-hmm. I agree. I think, again, playing a dirty style of football where you control the clock and time of possession – like, that can win you this game. I don't think Jalen needs to be an MVP candidate to win this. Just manage the game. I, I totally agree. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a negative kind of label for this one. I don't need Jahan Dotson to average, like, 15 yards a catch. No. I need him to average, like, five to six yards a catch. That's still enough to move the chains because we're probably going to get three yards per run with Saquon Barkley at times. Our explosives are going to go to guys like Dallas Goddard. And, Lou, it's not just on Jalen Hurts. Last year, I think they go down there, and we've seen this. They lose this game. I think they oh, lose this game absolutely. with the with the play caller and the play designer they had last year. Kellen Moore, empty the bag. That's you got two. Point. You Schemes got two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks to completely overhaul your playbook and put some new things out there that you can hide. This is when you bet you bring out all the tricks. Like we got to mm-hmm. scheme guys open. This is That's the such game. A good point. Maybe it's more in Kellen Moore than Jalen Hurts because you look at that. Week 18 game last year against the Giants when both Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are out. Jalen Hurts didn't have a shot with no. that offense. Like, Brian Johnson schemed nobody open. That's a really good point. Kellen Moore has to get these guys open. This is where he's going to make his yeah. money, Lou, for sure. And, you know, like, we talk so highly of Carson Wentz in 2019 because of what he did those final four games, winning four straight in the division to win the mm-hmm. division title. But when you look at those games, Carson, we weren't praising him because he was throwing for 300 
20 yards, throwing for three touchdowns. Believe it or not, Carson managed those games very mm-hmm. well. And he knew like when to use Josh Perkins, Deontay Burnett. He wasn't force feeding them the football. And then there were a few plays every game where he had to be special. You look at mm-hmm. the Miles Sanders touchdown in Washington or the go ahead touchdown to Greg Ward or that touchdown to Dallas in double coverage to Dallas Goddard in the back of the end zone. He didn't have to be special all the time because if he if he was gonna do that and force the ball, they were gonna lose those games. That's kind of the formula for this matchup is like how Carson and Doug won that division at the end of 2019. But it, like you said, Kellen Moore, he's a major part of that. I would even say that this is almost like McNabb's entire tenure almost. Basically, where yeah, it's like 2004. Outside of 2004, we didn't have a, a huge season passing yeah. wise. We, it was play within the confines of Reese's yes. system and then have a couple really nice scramble drills that open up plays. That's for, why the Super Bowl was yeah. so maddening because it's like he throws how many interceptions? Like this is so out of the context for him that a majority of his career it was we just have to live to see another down with Todd Pinkston and these mm-hmm. guys. Like we're not we don't have T.O. to throw for 20 touchdowns. This this is a game where your quarterback the best thing he can do is to be smart. And this is the game where his mobility comes through. This is the kind of game that you want a quarterback to be mobile, right? Mm -hmm. You look at that 2020 game. Why was Jalen Hurts able to beat a red-hot top-tier Saints team that was coming off, what, nine straight wins? And it was his first start of his career. It's because he and Miles Sanders ran it down their throats. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the run game and the elite offensive line with Miles Sanders, but Jalen as a scrambler was yeah. massive. Like I think Jalen, this is a game where I want him to have 60, and he can, 70 dude. yards. Like, Bo Nix yeah. and, and Jaden Daniels went crazy on this, this Bucks defense. This is a game where don't think about it. If you want to run in this one, run the damn ball if you're Jalen Hurts. Like, yeah. scramble. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Like This is one where I don't know if holding on to the ball, you're going to have somebody co- come open on that backside. No, like, I, I don't see you can that. get as a runner, I think, in this one. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, Lou, if you're going to trust anybody to go down there in this crappy environment where it's going to be super humid. Trust the guys that went to Alabama and Georgia. Like this is where they were. This is where they were raised, man. Like they were raised in the dirty South. They're going to go down there. It's It's swamp weather down there, brother. And they're going to go play exactly the sec ball that they were raised on. And Jalen hurts. If, if he has multiple turnovers in this game, I would put more emphasis on this game contextually than any of the first three because in the first three you could say oh he's trying to give Devontae a chance he's trying to give AJ a chance makes a boatload of sense but if it's like why are we throwing into double coverage for Johnny Wilson like I get that he's six foot seven but we got to be smart here Jalen we just have to hit our reads go through what Kellen Moore is going to do and if Kellen if they go for 300 yards on offense Kellen Moore like they should carry him out of that building, man. Because the last time they were in that building, they had no semblance of a chance because of the guy that was calling plays for them. How far removed is this team from that playoff game? We're really going to find out we'll in a see, couple it's days. Exciting. Totally going to see that Sunday one o'clock kickoff. Final predictions for Eagles Bucks coming up next as we wrap up this Friday edition of Lockdown Eagles. <laughs> Lockdown Eagles is brought to you by America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel. When you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. FanDuel, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. All you got to do is place your $5 bet. So when we drop LOE3 this weekend, Ride with Gino and I. Right now, we are red hot coming off that Saints win. Just bet $5, and you're automatically going to get $200 back in bonus bets at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. They're America's number one sportsbook and the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, we're getting you ready for Eagles Bucks Sunday at 1 o'clock. Gino, I feel old saying this, but I'm loving the back-to-back 1 o'clock games. Like, like, give me the 1 o'clock games every single time. I saw somebody on Eagles Twitter after that second game say, we don't have a primetime game for a while. Just get back to the 1 o'clock slate here for me. It's 11 o'clock. Just be in the mix and just get back to winning games that you know how to win games. Because when you're in the limelight – Everybody's watching. It could be a little bit different. This one o'clock slate. There's yeah, six, like seven it. games going on. I like being hidden. Yeah, yeah you're you're one seventh of the attention because it makes me angry when I watch 
non-Eagles people tweeting about the Eagles. It, it it's like, we already know our problems. You don't need yeah, to come and say, tell like, our family we have issues. I don't need to issues. hear the issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Don't come to our don't Thanksgiving tell dinner and tell my uncle's know. drinking too much. Get out of here. <laughs> I went a little bit harder with the dad trauma, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eagles wearing green and white, by the way. Love the vibes of that, too. I did not want to see them in all white like that playoff game, so no. that feels good, too. Right now, the Eagles, according to FanDuel, they are one-and-a-half-point favorites. I put the Saints there, my bad. That's the Buccaneers, of course, uh, at plus one-and-a-half. The over-under is at 42-and-a-half. Do you know, I like the Eagles to cover that. I mean, that's basically a pick them. Wouldn't mm-hmm. you consider that, what would you call it, a, a rat line? Yeah, I would not consider this a rat line. It no. is a whole underdog, so maybe they're kind of like, hey, it's a close game. Both teams are yeah. probably going to be a little ticked off. Tampa Bay losing to Bone Nix and the Broncos at home last week. The Eagles the last time they came down there. It's close to a pick I, I just think it's maybe America can't get a read on either of these two teams. The well, Saints the won. Report, was, I guess that's fair. Right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense as well. And. It was it opened up at the Eagles around minus three, and now it's down to minus yeah. one and a half. So maybe a lot of people are putting their money on Tampa, and they're hoping that people put money on the Eagles. But I think that 42 and a half, Lou, I know that it's going to be hot and humid, but the Eagles scored 15 points last week. Yeah, I was and say, that's still a low number for dreadful. They look dreadful. I, I think this is a game where you might want to put a little bit of sprinkle on that over because yeah, I still think like Mike Evans is going to, he's going to score points. Chris Godwin's probably going to get one. In. And again, Tampa's the defense is so banged up. Like I think yeah, that's what gonna, I mean. That feels like a trap that over under 42 mm-hmm. and a half. I'm with you. I'd, I'd hammer the over there. Yeah, I, I agree. Last week I was kind of on it. I knew that both of these teams, like they weren't going to score that many points. The saints were going to have to come back to earth at some point. But, but the thing I keep going back to is even if you take away one of Jalen Hurts' dumb decisions in the red zone or like mm. one of the Nick Sirianni miscues and add it per half. Yeah, they're scoring over 20 points. They're scoring over 20 points, even without A.J. Brown and Devontae yeah. Smith, simply because of decision making. We're not talking about they don't have the guy. Like, I trust them in the red area to run the ball and do enough to get down there. Jalen making one or two throws. But if they go down the old old town road that we know <laughs> we might be scraping out another 15 to 12 victory Lou I mean do you trust Baker Mayfield to to win in a shootout against you without an established run game that I don't know either I think it is close but at the end of the game man like I think the Eagles get one or two long drives like they have done in the past they establish that line of scrimmage like you had said and the defense that is already beat up for Tampa I think they're just gassed at the end of that game, and the Eagles can just put it on the shoulders of Saquon, maybe win, and it's 42 and a half points. So let's say the Eagles score 25 and Tampa scores 17. That's uh, right. 17 or 18. Yeah, I think that would be a reasonable score. All right, once the player props come out for this game, and it makes sense with all the injuries that it mm-hmm. hasn't been out yet by FanDuel, we will have a bonus LOE 3 10-minute show for you live on YouTube, so stay tuned for that. That's why you should subscribe not only to all of our audio platforms where our show is, but also on YouTube as well. And then we'll have a post-game show for you right after mm-hmm. Eagles Bucks Sunday at 1 o'clock. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On Eagles. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. For Gino Cavallari, I'm Lou DiBiase signing off. Thanks for downloading, watching, and listening, and let's go Birds. Fly, Eagles, fly.